We discussed the remainder theorem in our last video lecture. In this video lecture, we're going to take a look at the factor theorem when it comes to polynomial functions. Our objective, use the factor theorem to determine if a first degree polynomial is a factor of another polynomial. Okay, so let's go back and review a bit of what we've got so far. The remainder theorem. If f of x, which is a polynomial function, is divided by the polynomial x minus c, a first degree polynomial, okay, we found that we could either do the math to find the remainder, do the long division, polynomial divided by polynomial, or we could simply put c, the constant after the minus sign, into the f function, and the value of that is the remainder, is, is what the remainder is. So for example, find the remainder if f of x is this third degree polynomial, x cubed minus 4x squared minus 5, and it's divided by this first degree polynomial, x plus 2. Okay, now remember, if we do the math using polynomial division, we'll use x plus 2. If you want to do, use the remainder theorem, we need to write x plus 2 as x minus negative 2. Okay, because it's, it's divided, if you're dividing it by x minus the c. And so the c is after the minus sign, so in the case of x plus 2, the value of the c is negative 2. Okay, and the remainder theorem says the remainder is f of negative 2. Well, f of negative 2 equals, I'm going to take negative 2 and cube it right here. I'm going to subtract 4 times negative 2 squared minus 4 times negative 2 squared minus 5. I'll put this into a calculator and the remainder comes out to be negative 29. Okay, so it's a shortcut. We don't have to do all that long division. We can make sure that this is written as a, with a minus sign, and then we can put the C part, the part after the minus sign, into the function to get the remainder. Okay, let's, let's remember something else. What's a factor as a noun? Okay, so using numbers, a factor is a number that goes into another number completely with no remainder. Okay, that's the key. That's very important here. Or we can say it goes in completely. We can say it has no remainder. Or we can say it has a remainder of zero. Okay, and that's what we're going to be focusing on here. A remainder of zero. Because our remainder theorem will tell us whether or not the, re the remainder is zero. If the remainder is zero, we know we have a factor. Okay, so here we are. Using polynomial functions, a factor is a polynomial that goes into another polynomial with a remainder of zero. Again, our remainder theorem will tell us if there's a remainder of zero or not, okay? So, let's put that into words here. The remainder theorem tells us what the remainder is. If the remainder is zero, in other words, if whatever c, if whatever the value of c is goes into the function and out comes a zero in the remainder theorem, then x minus c is a factor of the polynomial. Okay? It goes into it evenly. It goes into it with a remainder of zero. So let's put this together in the factor theorem. When the function's value at c is equal to 0, then x minus c, if you want to put it in parentheses, you can, is a factor of the function. Okay? And it goes the other way around, too. When x minus c is a factor of the function, then f of c gives us a 0 as a remainder. It equals 0, but tells us that 0 is a remainder. So this here is the factor theorem, that piece right there. Okay, 
Now, of course, the good question here comes up, well, why do we care? Well, we're going to talk about solving polynomials coming up, okay? But knowing that x minus c is a factor is the same thing as knowing that c is a real zero. Huh. Okay, so it's, you're beginning to solve the polynomial. Where are the zeros of the polynomial? So factor x minus c and root c are the same thing, or zero c, if you want to put up here real zero. Okay, factor x minus c and root c are the same thing. Okay, let's take a look at a couple of examples. See this in action, because we're going to make use of this in upcoming video lectures. Okay, so let's see here. Example, we're just going to do, we're going to do one example, two parts. Okay, example one. Use the factor theorem. to determine whether the function f of x equals negative 2x cubed minus x squared plus 4x plus 3 has the factor, okay, a, x plus 1. Is x plus 1 a factor of this polynomial? Can x plus 1 be multiplied by another polynomial to get this polynomial with no remainder? Does it go into this polynomial evenly with no remainder? Okay, now let's remember, we're going to tie this in with the remainder theorem. x plus 1 is the same thing as x minus negative 1. Okay, so c is equal to negative 1. Okay, the remainder, the factor theorem, let's, co let's come down here, let's pull it down a little bit here. Remember, the factor theorem, okay, is this a factor, relies on the remainder theorem right here. Okay, okay, so let's use, the re let's use the remainder theorem. The remainder theorem says if, I, if c is negative 1 and I put this into the function, I'll get the remainder. Okay, so what is f of negative 1? Well, this means I take negative 2, and the input is going to get cubed, and I'm going to subtract the input squared, and I'm going to add the input times 4, and I'm going to add 3. So I'll put negative 1 inside of all these things. Okay, this requires a calculator. I think, let's see here, this is 2 minus 1 is 1, minus 4 is negative 3, plus 3 is 0. It equals 0. Okay, the remainder is 0. That means, okay, remainder. Okay, the factor theorem says if you have a remainder of zero, it's a factor. So, okay, x plus 1 is a factor. Okay, and oh, by the way, negative 1 is a real zero because the fact it's a factor and that it's a root of the same thing. It's a zero, it's a root. Okay, so, and we're gonna work with this later, negative 2x cubed minus x squared plus 4x plus 3 can be rewritten as a product because this is a factor as x plus 1 times another polynomial, okay? So I can rewrite this. This is a factor. 
which means I can factor times factor equals product. It's a factor because it goes into it evenly with a remainder of zero. Okay, let's take a look at example B. Whoops, I need another piece of paper. I'll refer back to this one. Okay, example B is, uh, is, is x minus 1 a factor? Okay, does it have the factor x minus 1? Okay, well, if it has the factor x, we know with x minus 1 that c is equal to 1. So let's put, let's put the 1 into our f function. Our f function is negative 2 times x cubed minus x squared plus 4 times x plus 3. Let's put a 1 into all these places. And this comes out to be negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 4 is 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. 4. That's not 0. Again, this is the remainder. The remainder theorem tells us if we put in the value of c, we'll get the remainder out. Well, this remainder is 4. It has some leftover. It's not 0. So x minus 1 is not a factor. It is not a real root. Oops, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that. It's not, it's not a factor. Is not a factor. It's not a factor. And, well, I'll, I'll leave it right there. X minus 1 is not a factor. Move on. Okay? Not, not a factor. Move on. Okay. One more fact I'm going to throw out. We'll go back to here. Okay? Okay. We, we were able to find, because X plus 1 is a factor, we are able to find a real root or a real zero and negative 1 is a real 0. Again, if we set this equal to 0, then negative 1, this becomes 0. It doesn't matter what this is. So we're able to find a real 0. Okay, so we're going to list a fact here which we'll, we'll pick up in a future video lecture. Fact. A polynomial function cannot have more real zeros than its degree, okay? So if you look back again at this previous example 1a, we know we have, we have a third degree polynomial right here, okay? We know we have a real zero of negative one. We cannot have more than three real zeros. Okay? So, all right, a third degree polynomial can not have more than three real zeros. And we're going to use this coming up in some future video lectures. A fifth degree polynomial cannot have more than five real zeros. Okay, so there's a fact we just kind of looked, took a look at briefly, and we're going to make use of that coming up. So there's your remainder theorem and your factor theorem, and we're going to, as we're, we're working our way towards solving polynomials.